to Howard and the telephone vote. Now, he's been looking at the technical revolution that's made it all possible. 20 years ago, telephone exchanges looked and sounded like this. Every digit dialed on the telephone moves contacts up and around until the right connection is made. Well, these electromechanical systems work remarkably well, but making a connection is only as fast as the speed of the mechanism. And in an exchange like this, it can take at least 10 seconds to connect your call. But this new digital exchange will connect you in milliseconds. There are no moving parts, just lots of microchips which switch and route the calls. And more than 75% of trunk calls use this system, and many local exchanges are being converted. But digital exchanges can also provide information about the vastly increased numbers of calls, and the network managers can keep an eye on the traffic and make actions, take actions if an overload looks likely. Well, on the map behind me, we can see all the regional digital centres around the country. Down here, for instance, is Plymouth. Plymouth and all the rest also appear on this more schematic diagram. Plymouth again down here. Here's our London exchange we're using, North Paddington. And way up the top there, the red blob EH is Edinburgh. And those lines represent the traffic between the exchanges. They are actually the 20 uh, lines with the heaviest uh, business on them at the moment. Now, what we're looking at here, and this is a, a exactly at this point where the if a sudden surge happened in calls, then the network managers could uh, take some action against it. Now, this information is updated every 15 minutes, so what we're actually looking at is what happened before 6.30, before we put out the information about the calls. So if we now look at the current situation, <laughs> look at that incredible change, all those lines now coming into our North Paddington. In fact, that's 6.30 to 6.45, and we did say don't call until after that, and I happen to know that 24,500 uh, people called in at the wrong time, thanks a lot. Now, the process uh, of displaying the, the information up there takes 11 minutes, so uh, we're going to have to wait just for a second to see the information that we're interested in in what's happened between 6.45 and 7 o'clock. Now this map up here also appears on the console of the network managers and if we get over there just in time we'll be able to see that map change. There's the network system there and over on the right it's just changed I believe and you can see that a lot of people are still ringing in in the, uh, that quarter of an hour period. Now, the network manager can also focus in on to, into any of the digital exchanges around the country. And Peter here's got the North uh, Paddington, the London exchange, up. And look at the calls. There they are going to our yes, no uh, numbers there, the red and green lines. Over on this side, we can actually see the details. Here's the yes line and uh, the numbers there coming in. There's no, and we can see 40,012. We're not sure about the yes. Now these of course represent only a fraction of the calls coming in from around the country because if they were all let through, the London Exchange would be overloaded and other people trying to use the exchange wouldn't be able to do so. So what happens is the uh, network managers um, know about a phone in advance and they can uh, make the changes, they can put in uh, blocks, if you like, because further up the lines here in the regional centres, they'll put blocks in that only allow so many of the calls down through to uh, London. And that's so that the blocks can maximise the number of calls down to the target number and minimise the disruption to other people trying to use that exchange. Well, let's have a look at the uh, results of the Tomorrow's World poll. We've seen how many uh, got down to uh, London. Um, we can see yes now up there is 2,794 and no as 552. But uh, as I said, this exchange has been protected by those blocks in the regional centres and they've held back a lot of the calls. But those calls can be actually counted by the computer. And I think, Jeff, you're having a look at Edinburgh, aren't you? Yes, Howard. We've got a pretty even split here. I've got 2,779 yes and 2,774 no. Oh, so undecided up in Edinburgh. What about Bristol in the southwest? Well, Bristol were the ones that you pointed to there, 2,794 yes and 552 no. I thought they'd changed, so very much in favour down in the southwest. What about another uh, north one? We can go up to Manchester, right. can we, Jeff? I'm just calling up Manchester. I'll tell you the figures in just a few moments. It's a bit slow. 
we would expect <coughs> Manchester to perhaps be a little more ambivalent about it, wouldn't we? Well, never mind. Is it there? Not quite. No, OK. Well, the hardest task <coughs> of all is Danny on the end, because he's had to count up the total from all the regional exchanges around the country. So have we got a, a final answer? Uh, we've got a final answer for the period between 6.45 and 7 o'clock. For the yes vote, it was 271,132. And for the no, it was 86... Eight, 86,712. All right, so we seem to be very much in favour in British summertime all the year round. Now, to our knowledge, is that the, the greatest number of calls in a 15-minute period to one number? It certainly is, Howard. OK, well, thank you to everybody who uh, called in and helped to test the, the world's largest network management system. It's, uh, it's still working, which is good news for comic relief in 10 days' time, and we'll pass on your attitudes about British summertime to the, uh, to the right.